Hello again, here we are um, with the um, second season of me coding, I don't know. Um, it's been a while since the last uh, video, um, uh, back in January, I think, when I was, I, I introduced uh, my library for the MSX, um, my libraries, um, and well, it was not really coding. It was more like a show and tell or, you know, an introduction. And um, yeah, I'm thinking that um, I might record some more coding videos um, if I have time and and motivation to do it. Like, for example, this one. Um, hopefully, um, I will do a better job than the last one where that the audio was kind of not very good quite low um you know i'm not a youtuber so there are chances that it's not going to look uh, great but at least i'm going to try um anyway uh what i'm going to do today is oh well at least that's the plan is um i'm working on this new game for the cds spectrum 40k 48k uh that is called opost um and Today, I would like to add a new type of enemy. So at the moment, I have only one type, which is uh, I, I'm not going with names in this case uh, because I think um, being for the AK, I don't think I'm going to be able to add very complex behaviors or at least a lot of them. So I'm just calling him Alien One, um, and that's probably good name right for now and the behavior is basically it moves um, horizontally or vertically in a in a fixed path um, as you can see can hit me um, and it's very basic and I would like to implement tonight an enemy that is going to be what I call a bouncer um, Basically, it moves uh, horizontally and vertically, and basically, when it hits um, when it hits um, an obstacle, it will bounce and change direction. Um, so, at the moment, what we have is in here. We have this alien V for vertical and alien H for horizontal. Um, I actually encode with a flag. I'm not sure. I might be, I might change that. But um, the map importer basically uh, it will detect if the this area is the height is uh, bigger than the width, and then it would set a flag with a bit. Um, but I'm not completely sure why I didn't use that in the code here. Mm, I didn't use that because... Hmm. Well, in reality, by the looks, yeah, looking at this, Hmm. Actually, no, we're going to clean up this and have, let's do that first. And then if we have time, we can do the other bits. Um, so I don't like that. So I'm going to change this and I'm going to call it alien one. Instead of having two types of entities, it's going to have one. And I save here and we're going to use the flag so now I need to make some changes uh, um, have a map map configuration file where I can specify some the entities that, that the, yeah because I had this hard coded previously in the map importer script but I th it was a little bit dirty so what I'm going to do, what I do now is I have a configuration file where I can define the types of enemies. So it's going to be alien one, 
and Alien 2. We don't use the bytes uh, to calculate how much they use. I don't remember what I added that. I think it was in one of the games I, was, I implemented. It was probably in Britrick, I think, is using that. And um, and W is the weight in case that, for example, uh, the alien is just one entity. But uh, if it fires, for example, we should take into account that it's going to use two entities because it may fire a projectile so that it will generate another entity. So if you have a limit of uh, whatever 10 entities you want to be sure that you never go over that limit so this value it will help us to calculate but I'm not using it so it's set to zero so so okay so this is then alien 1 alien 2 and then in it config now we're going to have alien 1 and alien 2 the order has to be the same, so when we get here, we map things correctly, right? So now we're going to have only Allen one. And there is some stuff to adjust here, so... So, oh, actually, the file is called alien because it was one alien before, and I, I just added a number so I can have alien 2 later on which is the one I, I was planning to implement today. Right, so um, the structure here for this engi engine engine is quite simple. So we have a, a function that updates the behavior of the alien, one function to draw, and one function to erase, which is very straightforward. And in this case, oh, I see why. Right, because... Um, in my entity structure I have a number of bytes and I'm probably using a lot of things here and overusing them so if I can manage to get the flag is so right so the alien is um, looking back into into tile these are a type of enemy that is fixed and when it's fixed what it's going to have is one extra byte telling us the distance of you know the size of this box horizontal or vertical um, so instead of the enemy calculating if it's going to hit any wall and, and change direction what it does is that we have the you know it's going to move this, that many um, tiles so it doesn't have to check the map the screen itself so the fourth byte so because we have three bytes so we have the first byte is the type and the, and the most significant bit is actually yeah is the is the flag for the direction direction so if he's facing left or right then we have x and y um, that arguably this could be only one byte but I think I prefer to have one byte for each instead of, instead of four bits because you know I can place the enemies better on the screen like that and uh, this alien, because it's a fixed entity, has one extra byte with the size in tiles plus the flag. Um, so the alien update basically uh, is using it flags as a counter. The first bit is a delay for the frame. Yeah, I probably are using too many things here. That's and. At some point, adding, adding more um, more items, you know, more things to the stru to the structure is probably going to save me more memory than actually reusing every single bit. <laughs> because I'm using C. If I was writing assembler, using those bits is probably better. But in C, 
I'm not completely sure anyway. So, so what I'm doing here is clean, clean the flag, right? So I'm using seven bits, seven lower bits to use flags as a counter and delay. See, I'm not so because the structure has some names to those, but to those items, uh, fields on the structure. Sorry, I wasn't finding the right word. To those fields, um, you know, I'm, I'm reusing them. So usually I use delay for, you know, for delay, uh, flags for flags, the frame is the frame in the animation. So I have kind of fixed names because I usually use those. But in this case, I'm using delay to measure the distance and flags is using it's been used to to move to that distance so, so to measure that we are getting to that distance and all but the la all but the most significant bit so the eighth bit that we're using for the direction but then we need to see if we're moving horizontally or vertically. So we probably need another flag. So question is, can, how can we do this in a way? Right, so we multiply by eight. So that means that we move in two pixels. So if I have 64, well, I mean, that's 128. 128 is not going to be enough for, for the whole screen. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I can borrow one bit from the flags to actually check if it's horizontal or vertical. Oh no, I'm silly, of course. We can just use the flag that we have already, right? So, right. So we need to keep the flag. Uh, so, so 128. I believe this is kind of quiet. Let's let's write it in a way that works, and then we can think if that's what we want. So basically, no, oh, sorry. So we keep highest byte bit, the highest bit, and then so this is. Divide by 16 because it's not the size of the tile. So, so that's 16. So 16 per 8 is 128. So yeah, just about right. And so we have one bit left. So because this is 128, this is uh, seven bits. So we can keep that one as the higher bit, then shift everything else, right? Right, so that should be okay. And then in here, uh, this now is ignoring the highest bit. So, can we use this constant? Yes. So clean dear flag and in here we can use dear flag yes because magic numbers are a pain. So alright, so in this case we are just just removing the flag to compare things. Um so basically anywhere we use delay, for example in here. We need to use the 
Green Deer Flag. Ah, this also changes because we need to check if yeah to use the entity ver vertical limit. Oh, we have a fix me here. Oh, we might change that later. Let's let's see if this works first. Right. So so delay now should be fine. Um. Um this is what we're going to use the new flag, right? Which is going to be in it delay and his dear flag. Okay. Let's take a look. No. Okay, map has an one unnamed object. So that means that uh, in tile, oh uh, yeah, because I have changed, I have changed these names here, but I think in my original test screen, yeah, of course, I have more. Right, so let's go to objects, and this is going to be awful. Maybe I could edit the JSON file, but oh, it's only three. Okay, so can I go? So this is the the screen we are because this is the start of the player start. So that should be fine. Let me remove and let's see. That's it. Ooh. Okay, so there is a problem here. So the alien here down below um, is the one that is getting the adjustment. So I would say that this should be not and yeah this one is not getting in the way it's getting to the limit it's fine this one is doing the same thing yeah cool so that was useful so let's do so coming message but it's okay um, right so that's one thing another thing we probably want to change is in here I'm going to rename this so with the alien C to Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. I mean, that's the name of of the alien anyway. Um, instead of wasting time trying to figure out names, I'm just going to call them alien with a name. And right. So. So now it's the one. Okay. We didn't break anything, did we? No. All right. So um, this is. 
this. Right, so that's done. Okay, cool. And I think about I have a plan. What if we fix this table? Nah, okay, no. Let's do the the new alien. That's the, what's the plan I had for today. And next time, you know, I, I can add the table later. The idea of using a table is because this it can be quite expensive in C. So if we look, for example, at the code that this is generating, uh, we are in spawning to this. So, yeah, I mean, I'm assuming because entities is, a, is an array of structures. So getting to the field update to assign um, these functions is, you know, that's going to be potentially a lot of code in here. So, ooh, it's not that much, actually. I like it. So I might not need a table. So the basic idea of the, nah, I mean, the table is going to be more efficient, 100% sure. Because if I need to do this as well for uh, other enemies, um, so every time I do this, it's going to be a chunk of code. While if I have a table, I can just copy what is three. So it's six bytes. And it's going to be the same amount of code for all the entities. So instead of having this all the time. Anyway, let's take a look at the plan, which is basically right. So I have this, which is a very simple design of a spinning alien. I'm kind of reusing a little bit some of the designs I have from Ichus and Gamma. Because that the style works very well. Um, it's in three frames, um, you have a very nice animation. And I mean, it's a 48K game. I can't really be too, you know, add too much, too many frames or very complex animations because I'm going to run with a, you know, run out of memory. So this kind of enemy, this type of enemy works very well. Um, so that's the alien we're going to use. And yeah, let's add that. So to add one enemy, we need to go here in tile. And I'm going to remove one of these because we're going to try the new one. And we're going to call in alien to, which is um, quite many. It's not going to be a fixed enemy because it's going to bounce. So it actually needs to look needs to look around and and check the map. So I'm going to remove this. Ooh, no, I'm going to remove this fixed parameter. And param is going to tell us if it starts bouncing, you know, it starts moving up and right or down and left. But for now. We're not going to use the flag. And we're going to start putting it here, for example. I thought it really doesn't matter. Right. So we have a new alien. So now I need to uh, in the map configuration. Oh, it's already done. I had that already. Okay, so I uh, alien two is already there. Excellent. So that will add, so that should compile. And so we have an, the alien already, but we don't have code in spawn entities to actually set up that enemy. And we also don't have the code of the enemy, right? So basically what we need to do, I mean, usually what I will do is just copy this. Uh, which is kind of what we're going to do, right? Uh, actually, let's copy it. 
So Allen 1 is going to be Allen 2 as well. And, and we can open it here. So Allen 2 is going to be, oh right, so I call it, the first one is called Ellen Update. Mm. Ow. So we probably need to rename that. So this is going to be one. And in alien one, it's going to be one. Yeah, and this is one of the cases where having some refactor functionality in my editor would be nice, but I don't have that configure for C, and especially not for <laughs> for C in A bits, right? Right, so that should still compile. Should compile, yeah. So let's commit the missing bits for the rename. Jeez, this one, this one, this one. And yeah, yeah. I have done this probably before, but it's okay. So this is going to be okay. Alien one should be alien two in here. Oh, of course they're going to be aliens. So let's add this one, and we add to the existing commit, and we okay. No, sorry. Any one. So uh, right. So we do it currently. We go down well. Yeah. Right. So let's get only one out of the picture. So this is going to be alien two. And I need to point C. So basically, I think I'm going to use as reference Alien One. So I'm going to need this. Do you want to need this? Yes. I'm going to need them because I need to know where uh, we're going to borrow things from the player, like checking what it is if we are hitting the player, for example. We need to access to the sprites of Alien 2. And actually, I need to check something here. Uh, I think it's called Fasty. Fasty, yeah. Okay, so I have already included the. Uh, the alien to data and this is this is complicated stuff I might explain that in a different session but basically this is a module that is called um, fasty or well, the file is called fasty and it's going to go into a memory area this is just related to the contented memory of the set spectrum there's some memory that's going to be slower so I'm going to, to I'm putting the sprites in an area of memory that is not slow. That is not slow. So, but I'm not going to worry about that now. So, right, and here we can just copy this. This is going to be similar. Now, in Alien Update, we probably don't want to put in that anything for now. Or we don't need to put anything for now. Now, um, but the draw and erase code is going to be clear what it's going to be. So basically, we're going to draw the sprite, um, and the color is going to be, for example, oh, it's going to be ink, red, no, yellow, for example. And delete is going to be the same, and everything's going to be the same. 
this I'm using um, exclusive or sure in for the sprites so basically I need to keep what is the frame so right so when I draw <laughs> I need to keep which frame I'm drawing because then I need to draw again on top of that one uh, in the same frame so I can erase exactly the same stuff I draw I mean sure it's, it's convenient uh, and it's fast but it's also picky because you need to do things properly and you need to try the frame when you do that and also um, for this game I want that classic feel of having sprites with color so the background is black obviously because I'm using uh, shore and otherwise it would look like garbage when drawing on top of patterns in background so what I'm doing here is um, because of that uh, the background is going to be black <coughs> excuse me I can actually use a color for the sprite so this sprite is going to be yellow Hmm, I'm not sure. I think we're going to have a problem with this. We'll see. Because when we detect the collision, we may overlap on a tile a little bit and we might break the colors of the background. In that case, I think this enemy will have to be white unless we can avoid that. But for now, let's leave it like this because it's not even moving. There's no code for update anyway. Um, and then when we erase, we erase with uh, white uh, because the player sprite doesn't have attributes and so all the black background has to be in reality in white <laughs> and bright although that is, it's all paper which is black um, so it, that's why it looks black because there is nothing drawn in right so this should draw and erase uh, while at least um, one frame of the, of the alien and in here we need to define code for our new alien which is going to be alien2 uh, actually extra in the other one is being used for the color so we could be having aliens of different colors uh, without any change and actually we could be using extra for that flag, so we probably <sighs> the extra flag thing we did today, you know, before we could be using that extra. Mm, okay, I will think about that because it's definitely going to be simpler. Right, so in this case, we don't need any of this, we just need to set update draw and erase because the common code is already set in the type of the entity the id in case there is persistence and you know we have to set the flag so you know when you pick up an item the item you disappears and you don't you are not going to see that again so it doesn't respond and it says the direction flag and then x and y so that's common and also we set all the structure to zero so all the flags will be zero so it means that the frame will be zero so I think this is enough do we compile? no we don't compile because we didn't include the definition of alien2 in here right so we, sh we should see it didn't see anything and it did crash indeed what what is that that red it means that something went wrong but I don't remember exactly oh right so this is wrong because we don't have an extra byte now so this one has the common ones and the fourth uh, one extra byte with the, with the distance we're going to move but this one doesn't have it so I was because I was copying that's why I was waiting all right 
so and it doesn't move that's the first frame and it doesn't do anything i mean it's too high but if we can touch it and nothing's going to happen so compare with this one it has go to actually to look there right so let's take a look at alien one so this is going to be similar not the same and it's not going to be the same because we're going to use delay and we're not going to use it for anything else so so basically this is going to be changing from 0 to 1 so we have delay when showing the frame animation right let's run that and it's not working <laughs> Uh oh no because uh, our city sorry about that yeah of course I would you know delay is zero so it's never going to get in it's going to it's not going to show the bike all right so that's the animation um about the speed it's probably too much so what if we do this so instead of being delay one, we can do delay two. Did it change anything? Yeah, it looks like it did. Okay, so what if we do? So this is the equivalent of. Wow, that's too weak. Seriously? Hmm. So this is swapping zero and one. So it was that it was that fast when we tried that. No, it wasn't. So this is exactly what we had. So it's sure of one. Oh, right, because the first time delay is zero. So, yeah, this is spinning. Okay, so that's equivalent to this. Let's make it a little bit slower. Oh, no, it doesn't look good. It's too slow. Well, I mean, if we're going to do this speed, we'd rather keep this because it's simpler, right? So now, what we're going to do basically is separate X and Y. So... We need two flags. We can do the duration flag because it's there already for X, for example. So 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 if all flags and the dear flag. Then, then we're going to increment x and y or y, right? So, okay, so okay, uh, so I guess in here we're going to check if this map. We're going to use is map block blocked, right? Is that right? Which is checking if it's solid. We don't want, and it also we check platforms. Although we don't have platforms yet, 
right so so is map blocked it's going to be x y if it's map block then we change direction right so Otherwise, we're going to do X. Okay. Otherwise, the other direction. I mean, I'm not doing the map block currently for now, but I'm doing that. I will going to change that now. Right. So if we're going the x, so if we're incrementing, it's going to be we need to check the next move. So it means that it's going to be so the sprites are sixteen plus sixteen, so it's going to be fifteen plus two. So 17 and this one is minus 2 and because we're only checking one point we're going to check the center which is going to be 7 or 6 7 6 7 I don't know 7 and 7 plus 7 uh, okay, so now we should move left to right. And it's not breaking the background, so that's good. And the difference with the one, the, with the enemy we have down below is that it's actually checking the map. So it's looking at the map and can see obstacles. Right, okay. So these. Okay, so we're going to have a look at flag here. There's going to be the. It's going to be 64. So we're going to have another flag. And this is going to be pretty much the same. But now it's going to be. So, dear white flag. Once we change, dear white flag. And it's going to be this time in the X, then the Y increment, decrement, and then this is going to be plus 17 minus 2. Hello. For now, this one is the one that can probably not work right. Oh, let's see. Well, it's kind of doing what we wanted, right? I mean, we can do a little bit of better enemy placement in here, like maybe, let's see. So it does here. Yeah. I mean, very often the artificial intelligence of your game is not going to be very intelligent, so you need to give a little bit of help sometimes. See, that's what I, what I was thinking that it will happen. 
Oh dear, dear, dear. I mean, one thing we could be doing is uh, grab what is the attribute and just restore the attribute we have. Oh, and there is another thing that is wrong. Well, okay, so let's fix one thing at a time. So for now, let's don't do attributes. Which is anyway something that probably we should be doing anyway. So let's don't don't do attribute with that one. So that's one thing. The other thing is that we need to check that we are out of bounds. So the x has to be less than oh, I don't remember this now. So it has to be Tile map width multiply per tile width minus sixteen. Or the other one. No. No. Like this. No, 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 no. Maybe we should change the, the sign here. Let's do that. So, yes, if it's less and not, then move otherwise change flag. So, it has to be less than the border of the screen minus 16. Right? No. Minus 16, minus 2, because that's the one we're going to move. One thing. Then in this case, it's going to be it x has to be bigger than 2. And no. And for y, we need to do the same thing. Yeah, it's to prevent that we check all the bounds, 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 and break the stuff. So, to our height, for height, 16, minus 2, and not. And here. No. Okay. So um, I thought it was not crashing or anything, but it's just because. Okay. Uh, what? Oh, I know what it is. It's because reasons, of course. Right, um, mm, 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 mm. it's because I have, yeah, I have a configuration value here for the size of the, of the sprites. This is just to optimize how, how the, um, the tiles, uh, the sprite functions work. It's not the tiles, the sprites. So basically, um, what we have here is that the player is, is, is 24 pixels high and this is 16, so I need to change that before using the function. Right, so now it can get, yeah, it can cross over things and it's not going to change the colors, which for now I think is fine. Um, I may decide to keep maybe I can save 
the color in the background and then restore yeah but that, that's tricky anyway because if there are things overlapping you know two different areas overlap with different colors it won't work really it's going to get it stuck in there it looks like it well it's not the most smart editing is it let's put it more like i don't know i thought that was a good placement but it looks like it's not uh what else we can do let's Let's put the last bit of code, which is basically check for the player for impact. And we also need to do something about. So this is actually check for the player with height 16. And it's going to check that, you know, do a player hit. And then this is not needed anymore. So what we need to do instead is you want to change direction, I would say the change direction. It's going to be the flag or and, you know, and also this one. So now when it hits the player, it should change direction completely. That's it. Did it change there again? Oh, and actually, interesting. Yeah, it can just cross the stairs, right? Did it do that? Okay. <laughs> yes, it changed direction, so it's working. And it can get down the stairs. Nice. I mean, it's not the most exciting animation, is it? But okay, it works. I mean, it's actually like any other, uh, any other enemy. So we can. Put the blaster here, right? And I mean, it should work as any other enemy, so yeah. Ooh. I don't know. I mean, the animation looks a little bit so so, right? Um, from and so I think she looks better actually <laughs> it looks better I think I mean it's still not amazing to be honest but another thing we could be doing with the attributes I guess is check more points to ensure that we don't yeah but it's look look I mean the way it's getting stuck in there that's the usual problem with this type of enemy uh, 
I mean, I like the sprites to have color, obviously. Uh, but I don't know really if it's worth it, to be honest. Hmm. I will think about it, I think. Uh, it looks slightly better if it's slower. Another thing we could be doing is, instead of moving to sprites, what if we do in a removes one? Or we could be making it move less vertically, maybe? Don't know. I mean, without changing anything, just to take a look. Say how it looks. Um, surely it's going to help when it gets stuck oh, removes different I mean always it's always going to get stuck um, for sure so because it's basically how this works. I mean, we could be making better the, I don't know, make it smarter, but it's probably not worth it. I mean, this is what it's going to be. Let's see what happens if I move this is slower. Different animation. Yeah, it doesn't look great, does it? Yeah, I don't think we can use the attributes uh, anyway. Uh, let's make it even slower. No, we can use the attributes because <laughs> no, this is okay. Um, yeah, there are cases like, for example, yeah, when it plays over, for example, objects like the blaster, it's going to look really bad. Uh, there's another thing that I'm not completely sure I like. And it's in the sprite. Uh, maybe. Uh, because this bit in here. So. See? Definitely. Okay. So this one, I guess, and I guess in here, so there's one one pixel, so there's at least this is missing, right? That's definitely better. Let's take a look now. Ah, yeah, that was wrong. And yeah, about the speed, I don't know. I'm undecided. I'm not going to change it anymore. I'm going to leave it fast <laughs> for now. And I can change that later. I'm a little bit confused. Uh, what is the alien one doing? It's the same, isn't it? So when the first bit is set and the flask keep the flask keep always going up. So this is going to be one. The next time will be zero. 
is the same. So why is it looking different? Or maybe it's just because of the type of the animation. Hmm. What I'm doing here when I'm creating the, the sprite? Zero, one, two. Yeah, it's the same. Well, I can make one extra frame, the first one, duplicating the first one. Mm. Maybe that's our first frame. Will that make it look better? Aha. I need to force that sprite this process. Well, I like it better. And that is adding, is that adding a lot? I don't know. Let me see. Um, adding two. So, hmm. Okay. I mean, it's two bytes. Two bytes is okay, isn't it? What is two bytes? It's not at all. I like it. So I'm going to keep it like that. Well, yeah, I think we are going to leave it here because that's basically what I wanted to do. Maybe it's not a good idea. I don't know. Uh, one thing we haven't tried is to set the flag for the direction, the direction. So if I said that, um, in here, um, it's going to set the flag. Should we also set the flag for Y or we have it just with X? Let's try. So one should move right, start moving right. And the other one should start moving left. I think it's fine. Let's see again. Yeah, they start moving up, both of them. I think that's fine. I think it's fine. And it's not a terrible enemy, to be honest. Um, and it's not too expensive. I mean, it's a shame that it's white. <laughs> uh, I wanted. Yeah, I think I want better color sprites, but then the color clash, the color clash is is not great, is it? That's the specy for you. Hmm. What happens? Oh, this could be another problem, actually, because. Explosions themselves are color sprites. So if this enemy is actually yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to keep the background. The attributes, read the attributes, keep a copy, and restore the attributes. 
and then I might be able to use chorus sprites because anyway I mean if if the enemy is actually on top of of the background it's not going to raise the color see let me see if I can actually force that I think it's really bad no See, the problem is, okay, in the step. Oh man. Oh no. <laughs> so bad. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, see? See the block here? That's what I'm talking about. That's because of the explosion. So yeah. It's not ideal, but. For now, I'm going to keep it and I will see how to fix the rest. Uh, cool, so I think that's enough for today, for this session. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, it was not boring, it was interesting and I didn't explain as many things as I usually do. I'm going to try to do it like that. Like, you know, I might explain some things, but not everything. Um, because that was one of the problems of the previous season. <laughs> Even the, the previous videos I recorded that. Um, it took me too long to actually do anything. And very often, you know, sometimes things don't work the way you expect. So... Uh, it's kind of worse when you are recording a video so yeah I might explain some things as I go but not everything and yeah I mean today has been great um, some tidying and new enemy and new functionality um, so yeah you can I think we can say that you could expect more videos coming I'm not sure when but yeah it's very likely anyway that's all for today Thank you for watching and bye bye bye.